Good to see that there are conferences. I wish there were more in my profession. Because people come together and share knowledge, share progress, discover how you can get better, discover what people what people who are doing better things are doing, whether you can match them as well, doesn't happen often enough in, my, in our profession. Where it does happen a lot is in the playing of the game. There is a huge cricket festival that takes place, around the, uh, takes place for two, two and a half months every year, which is where all the knowledge of the world gathers in one place and is a wonderful, there's a wonderful osmosis taking place where the whole world gets collapsed into a small entity, it's called the IPL. Part of, the, part of what you hear is how much the rights go for. I don't know how many zeros in 48,000 crores, but I hope there's enough zeros to raise more lives. The IPL lifts lives. The number of people whose lives have got lifted by the IPL is incredible. But what it does is it brings together knowledge like no other gathering in the world does. You might be a young player, you may not be getting a chance to play, but on the bench there are some great people. The coaches are state of the art among the best in the world. Even if you don't get a game, you go back a better player. They share, Brian Lara is sitting there with the Sunrisers, Virat Kohli is sitting with the Royal Challengers Bangalore, goes through a phase where he's not doing too well. At the end of the game, when all the rivalries have merged and dissipated and gone, and you're still part of one larger globe community, they meet and talk about what one is doing right and what one is doing wrong. So Joss Butler, who's scoring 800 runs, goes up to Virat Kohli and says, there's an aspect of my game I wanted to talk to you about. And he says, you're wearing the orange cap, I can't score a run. But they're willing to talk to each other. It's a wonderful, what happens in the IPL is beautiful because at one level you're competing, and that's really a lovely way to live life. For three and a half hours you compete. You compete, you don't give an inch, you don't give a millimeter anywhere, you don't allow the opponent to succeed. As soon as the last ball is bowled, all the rivalry just goes away. And as I said a little while ago, you become part of a larger village. Our game is a village. I wish there was more in my profession. My profession is on the fringe. As I said, we, we just we go to a game and tell people what has happened. Sometimes we educate them, more often we get educated. But there are a couple of interesting things that are happening that I thought I would share with you that I think are very similar to what happens in, in your profession as well. I was very interested in knowing uh, how Indian doctors and Indian organizations are now carving a niche all over the world. When we were growing up, we were told that your cricket education is complete when you go west. It's beautiful how the world has moved. Cricket education is now completed when you come east. And India is now not just the center of the world's financial market, which is okay. Finances are an outcome of what you do. They are not the reason for your existence. They are an outcome of excellence. They are an outcome of what you do. So we are obsessed with the money around the IPL. What we can be very happy about is that it is the world's greatest festival. And people are coming here to learn. Ben Stokes, the best all-rounder in the world cricket at the moment, in the eyes of many, said he wanted to come to the IPL because Joss Butler became a better player when he went back to England. They're seeing people go back, becoming better players. The best coaches in the world all congregate over here. And so everyone's knowledge is growing. All that is, is happening here. But within our sport as well, there's something that's, that very interesting is, is happening. Which is there's a revolution around data and machines. As we get more and more data, you're getting into a situation where machines are able to simulate what is likely to happen. And so we are caught up in this interesting little get together almost, which happened when I was in management school. In management school, we always talked about the academics versus the practitioners. And it's almost as if the academics said, they are commercial guys. And the practitioner said, Wo to class mein padhate hain. And so there was always this conflict between the academic and the practitioner in management school when I went. Now we are seeing the conflict between the people who measure and the people who have played. The people who have played said, this is how it should be. The people who are measuring said, no, but our numbers are telling us something else. 
and technology is moving to an extent where decision making is now happening through machines. And I wonder if that happens in your profession. Is, is the machine becoming the doctor? Or is the doctor still the doctor and the machine is just the tool to enable the doctor? Data analytics in my sport is at a state where it might start taking over the sport. And we have to then say, okay, does the analytics take over the sport or does someone sift through the analytics and say, how does that help me take a decision? So we are in this very interesting evolutionary stage in our sport because all along we didn't have the tools to measure. And it's happening more and more in T20 cricket, not in test match cricket because there are far too many variables in test match cricket. T20 is a little more homogenized and so you can measure a lot better. So that's, that's something that is, that is hyp happening a lot. Earlier we used to have hypothesis and instinct. And we used to measure people by instinct. We used to judge how good people were by instinct and we formed hypotheses about people. But we never had to measure people. Because what we measured was a very tiny part of the game. Now we are measuring, we are measuring so much more that what we are measuring is taking over the hypothesis. Very often it is contradicting long-held hypotheses. And I don't know if that's happening in the medical profession as well. That the numbers are telling us, the numbers are challenging what we thought was the truth. So that, that, is, that is something very interesting that's happening. The other thing that happens because the world is changing so much, a lot of us who've been around for 25, 30, 35 years, we all go into cruise mode after a while. Because when you've been around for 30 years, you've seen every, every situation that is possible to be seen in the game, or so we believe. The game makes a fool out of you very, very often. Every day you, something new comes up, but you think, yeah, I've been around for a while, I know. And as the game changes, it tells you, no, you don't. I don't know if that happens across professions, that after a while you think, I know it all, you know, I've been around for so long, I know it all. And something happens that tells you, actually the world is changing, you don't. And so for my generation, luckily a lot of people here are a lot younger than I am, but a lot, for a lot of people of my generation, staying relevant is the key. We have to fight very hard to stay relevant because we belong in somebody else's world, they don't belong in our world anymore. Once you go past a certain age, you move out of a certain part of the world, that world is now somebody else's. But we have to stay relevant to be able to belong to their world. i just give you a little example. Suppose someone plays a great shot. My first instinct was to say, oh, the sound came off his bat like Pandit Ravi Shankar would have played a sitar. My audience is saying, uncle, we follow BTS. <laughs> BTS is this Korean pop group that I read about. I know nothing about them. Can I talk about Game of Thrones? Until I discover that, hang on, by the time I get to know what Game of Thrones is, it is past tense, you know. So in my metaphor, can I say RRR? Or Srivalli? But do I know it? It doesn't naturally come to me, so I have to try much, much harder for my metaphors, for my context to stay relevant. Because we are all on the wrong side of relevance. We fight hard to stay where we are, to be relevant for somebody else's world. That is the world I inhabit. And so most of my worries are about staying relevant. I don't know whether changes in technology force that to a lot of people. Because I, I followed cricket at a time when we measured runs and minutes. Not always balls. Cricket was this wonderfully timeless game. We used to have timeless tests in the, in the 1920s, you know, that, that went on for 12 days, 13 days. Because essentially life was fun. We didn't have much to do in life. I grew up in Hyderabad where a day had 35 hours. I came to Mumbai where a day is about a 16, 17. Huge difference in, in, in where it's going. So we all need to fight to stay relevant. Our game, is, uh, our game is changing very fast. You know, you will find some of us say, I'll just give an example of how the game has changed in its perception from those that play it and those that watch it. In the old days, we always said if someone hit a boundary and then took a single, you say, how clever is that? You know, took a boundary, it's got a boundary in the over, don't get out, just take a single, go to the other end. Today, if I say that on air, 
saying he took a six. Oh, he's taken a single. That's a very clever thing to do. Someone will turn at me, Uncle, why are you saying it's a clever thing to do? Because he's lost out on five runs. He could have hit another six, right? A single after a six is not a very clever thing to do unless you have no other choice. So I have now got to make a living in a sport where every ball is an event from a sport where every ball was a setup for an event that might happen. But now every ball is an event. And so we have to stay relevant to, uh, 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 we are relevant to that event. We, t we used to talk about anchor batsmen. How someone anchors an innings. There is no room for that person anymore. Because we do not measure people by runs. As we should not measure people by runs, but we measure them by strike rates. If six people make 30 of 20 balls, you've got 180 and 120 balls, you win most matches. If one person makes 60 or 50 balls, you're almost certain to lose the game. So the way we measure people has also changed. Analytics is telling us a lot more. It's telling us if you lose a wicket in the first six overs, then you are about seven, eight runs behind already. If you lose a wicket in the 19th over, it doesn't really matter. It's just a dot ball. So we have to learn. And so for, for people in my profession at the moment, staying relevant is the key. Because I said we're on the wrong, we're on the wrong side of relevance. So I just thought I'd share my, my, uh, my thoughts about, about those matters. Because there are some people of my vintage, but happily a lot of people much younger than I am. So once again, thank you, thank you very much for inviting me. And I hope the conferences continue because everybody must grow knowledge. If you don't grow knowledge, I remember when we were kids, one of the pioneering books of our times was a book by an author called Alvin Toffler. And the book was called Future Shock. And for us, it was a cult book of its times. But what, it, what that book said is still relevant. It said the illiterate of tomorrow is not the person who cannot read or write, but the person who cannot learn. And that is the very essence of my livelihood. I have to keep learning because if I don't learn, the game is not beholden to me. The game moves on and leaves me behind. So I just thought I'd share, I'd share some of those thoughts that I'm going through. I don't know if they're relevant to what you're going through. I hope you have a lovely time. I hope you have a lot of fun. Thanks. Pleasure. Uh, thank you so much, Harsha. It was so uh, inspiring to see a different perspective. And it, I think it has taught us how to be relevant. And even, uh, you know, how in the age of dinosaurs things changed. We cannot be like ostrich with the head in the sand and we have to evolve in our medical practice also. Uh, may I now request... Thank you for calling me by my first name. I'm the only person, I think, in this room. No, it's not working, right? Uh, I think you can come here. Yeah. I noticed she called me by my first name, which tells me two things. One is maybe she thinks I'm young enough to call by my first name, which is nice. But also I'm probably the only person in this, in this room who cannot have a doctor attached to his name. Yes. So, <laughs> uh, and in fact, my entire family is completely cricket mad. So I've heard a lot about you. And I was one of the exceptions to the rule, but now I'm going to be a convert too. So may I now request Dr. Shanta Kumari, Dr. Uday Thanawa, and Dr. Ashok Kumar to come forward to have a, a felicitation of Mr. Harsha Bogle and thank we yes yes we would like to thank you for your valuable time presence and inspiring words please come to the center <laughs> and I'll request all the other dignitaries to come on the uh, both sides for the photograph and can we all audience give give them a big round of applause and uh, thank him for being here Hello. 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 Yes. Yes. Handle mic. Take it. Thank you for that excellent talk. And uh, this says, uh, "Your honor, we are honored by the presence of your pre of your presence in the inauguration of the Google Conference." So, thank you very much for being here. And before you leave the stage, Harsha, I want you to do one more thing. Uh, we showed you that cricket match and nobody asked, Jita Khan? Cricket match, so the guy who won, Shaijas, 
आई बिलीव यू वन आप दो ऑफकोर्स आई गॉट वेरी डिफरेंट कमेंट्रीज फ्रॉम एवरीबडी के हमने उसको धो दिया इन्होंने हमको धो दिया बट अल्टीमेटली ही इज द गाई हू मेड आई थिंक फिफ्टी रन एंड स्टेट ऑन द क्रीज फॉर द मैक्सिम टाइम सो आई रिक्वेस्ट Shaijas is our all-rounder, yeah. singer, dancer, <laughs> cricketer. <laughs> so all the cricket team, if they want to come, come on the stage now. And uh, Shaijas, yeah, you want to say something to her? Yeah. Okay. Requesting members of the cricket team to please come up quickly for the photo with uh, Harsha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you have to make some noise and look more active. You can't be. Yeah. <laughs> and now, Shah, I just will say something for Harsha. Yes. Arey, maybe sir, I am. Yeah, I am. You've taken me out of the huddle. A big round of applause for the cricket team and the enthusiastic people who actually came and did all this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Harsha, we request you to stay there. We have one.